And welcome to tonight's Gay Liberation Network television program here on Chicago Access Network Television. We're going to be discussing 11 years of the Guantanamo prison. And we call it the Guantanamo prison, even though the official name of it is Detention Center, because to talk about Detention Center makes it sound like some place you go for after you skipped class. We're talking about a prison that the United States has been illegally operating uh, for 11 years uh, for uh, predominantly Arab, Muslim, and South Asian uh, people, uh, the vast majority of whom have been held there without charges, let alone trials. And uh, just this afternoon, we had an action spearheaded by uh, Jill McLaughlin here of uh, World Can't Wait and a number of other organizations. We're discussing what are the issues involved here with the Guantanamo Bay prison, which uh, for those who are maybe a little bit geographically challenged is in the nation of Cuba. It's territory that the United States has literally stolen from the Cuban people uh, and to this day uh, holds uh, subsequent to the uh, Cuban revolution of the early 60s. Um, but Jill, uh, Tell us a little bit about who is held at the Guantanamo Bay prison and why people in this country should be concerned about that. <clears throat> uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me on your show. Um, the vast majority of the people being held at Guantanamo are people who were humanitarian aid workers, charity workers, uh, people such as... Uh, myself and you mm -hmm. who you know albeit are, of a different skin color right. typically <laughs> i mean these were people that were were trying to make a living had mm -hmm. gone to afghanistan or pakistan to find work mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and uh when the uh u.s invaded afghanistan mm -hmm. um, they got ensnared in the so-called war on terror mm -hmm. uh were uh, most of them uh were uh, turned in for a b bounty, uh, mm -hmm. some bounties up mm -hmm. to $25,000, which for uh, somebody living in Afghanistan, which is one of the poorest countries in the world, that could feed your family for a whole year. And so you have the the great conqueror coming in and saying, hey, you just point us to some terrorists and we'll give you $25,000, which is uh, perhaps as much as a, a few years uh, wages for right. uh, the typical Afghan, sure. and so you had people turning and uh, uh, sk settling scores by uh, turning in neighbors, perhaps, or people that did not have a connection to the local community precisely because they were aid workers. And you know, there you have uh, the so called uh, terrorists that are being imprisoned at uh, Guantanamo Bay, many of them who were doing the right thing and the United States comes in at the beginning of two, uh, at, uh, 2001 and yeah. Correct, yeah. And um, so you have these situations where these, these men are being held without charge or tri trial for you know years on end. Mm -hmm. um, right now there's 166 men mm -hmm. still being detained at Guantanamo, uh, 86 of which have been cleared for release and yet our government refuses to release them. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's criminal what yeah. this government has done. And most of these men were tortured and uh, consequently confessed to things that they had never done. Mm -hmm. And what happened to the people who uh, tortured them, Jill? Nothing. Yes. I mean, surprise, surprise. I mean, we had uh, the Obama administration come into office specifically saying that it would not um, uh, prosecute the, the crimes of the previous administration. And yet, of course, these men, uh, who many of whom have not been uh, even charged with anything, let alone uh, uh, had any trials, let alone being convicted, are being held. And yet, of course, the Bush administration officials who uh, orchestrated much of this um, are, you know, enjoying the retirement or waiting in the wings for the next Republican administration. Right. Writing yeah. books, going on book tours. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have it being interviewed at mm -hmm. different, you know, uh, prestigious universities, uh, mm -hmm. other venues, um, mm -hmm. and treated as if, you know, they're heroes. And, you know, repeatedly Obama has refused to prosecute. And, uh, 
as well as his administration, the Department of Justice, getting court cases mm -hmm. by people who had been tortured and detained thrown out. Right, right. And they've fought these cases very, very aggressively on the behalf of uh, uh, officials in the previous administration. Donald Rumsfeld, for example, has been very aggressively defended by uh, the current administration. Um, I should note, uh, if you want to uh, join in the conversation, you join uh, us by calling that number on the bottom of your screen, 312-738-1060. We'll try and uh, fit you in. It's only a 25-minute program, so uh, think of your question or comment fast and, and call and ask Jill and myself uh, or, or make a comment. We certainly do welcome that as well because this is a uh, an issue which has unfortunately been largely overshadowed in the U.S. media. Um, not only do we have the issue of lack of prosecutions of people uh, that conducted these tortures, these waterboarding, which has been recognized as a torture technique for literally centuries, um, you also have the Obama administration very aggressively attacking uh, whistleblowers who blow the whistle on none other than Bradley Manning, um, whom we've covered on <laughs> the several previous shows here on uh, the Gay Liberation Network on Can TV. Um, and uh, today, um, our own buddy Bell uh, talked about the issue of Bradley Manning in the context of Guantanamo. Jill, could you tell our listeners what is the connection between uh, what Bradley Manning allegedly did and Guantanamo Bay? Um, what's the connection there? Sure. Um, well, when WikiLeaks, uh, le uh, they... Uh, dumped a bunch of documents uh, related to Guantanamo. Mm -hmm. uh, and subsequently, Bradley Manning is alleged to have been mm -hmm. responsible for, mm -hmm. uh, you know, leaking mm -hmm. these all these files mm -hmm. uh, to, mm -hmm. um, to WikiLeaks um, and is being held and will probably, you know, will face trial, mm -hmm. uh, probably uh, in prison for life. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's, let's hope not. Let's I hope mean, not. Let's, but, let's not count it out uh, just yet. But, uh, but uh, that's certainly what the government wants to do. But mm -hmm. I, the connection here is that um, what's in these files related to Guantanamo shows what a farce mm -hmm. uh, these, these um investigations the in, these interrogations mm -hmm. were mm -hmm. that they were being that many of these people were being held without trial right and we wouldn't know who a lot of them are without exactly. uh, the alleged uh, uh leaks by uh bradley manning isn't right. that right you know. correct mm -hmm. correct and so you you have these situations where these detainees are being tortured they're confessing to things that they had never done they're you know uh turning in this guy that mm -hmm. guy because they simply want the torture to stop right right so you have you know all this you know mishigas going on and you don't know what the exact truth mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. and we find out the truth later on after some of the detainees have been released. Mm -hmm. What exactly happened? Or thanks to the to WikiLeaks, but uh, we do have a caller on the line, uh, Adele. Uh, you're on Can TV. What's your question or comment, please? And how are you doing? I've been seeing you around for years, and I've, I've <laughs> met you in person at City Hall. You're a, you're, you're a go getter. You're an activist. You you out there in the trench. Oh, thank you, Adele. And I just want to <laughs> remind you that this has been going on for years, like the Burge yeah. case. At, and thank you for bringing up that connection, Adele. Uh, the Burge, we can't act like this is something just happening down in, in a U.S. occupied portion of Cuba. It's happening right here right. in Chicago. Yeah, and Jim Crow. So, you know, just stay, just, hey, the fight is on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The fight is on. And yeah. nice, have a happy new year. Oh, happy new year to you too, Adele. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Well, uh, Adele brings up a really important issue. In fact, we had a chant uh, during today's demonstration, if I can remember right. Uh, help me out here. Uh, I believe it was uh, from, from Guantanamo, Guantanamo to, to City Hall. Hall. Uh, tortured prisoners, free them all. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we definitely were. There is a domestic angle, and, 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 and human rights activists in this country often I think create uh, a real problem sometimes by acting like all the problems of human rights are someplace else, whereas the United States uh, not only 
hosts and supports the, many of the regimes around the world that commit these awful tortures. But, of course, a lot of that stuff happens right here in the United States. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, the one thing you have to say about the policy of extraordinary rendition, that is, you know, kidnapping people out of different countries and taking them to CIA uh, 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 secret prisons and so forth, is that uh, that's basically subcontracting torture mm -hmm. that would otherwise happen in the United States to other regimes. And it's very interesting that a number of the regimes of the United States claims that it is, you know, dead set against because they're horrible human rights uh, records. People, uh, regimes like Assad's Syria, uh, Gaddafi's Libya, that the United States was actively involved in extraordinarily renditioning um, people that it kidnapped in other countries to those regimes were the most vile tortures, I mean, pulling out uh, toenails, that sort of thing, uh, were conducted basically on behalf of the United States, taking care of a dirty problem that they'd uh, rather have offshore uh, so that they can uh, disclaim responsibility. Correct. Tell us a few uh, about a few of the other issues that came up in today's demonstration, Jill. I mean, people were not just talking about Guantanamo, but Bagram, and tell people what the story is with that. Sure. Bagram uh, detention facility. Uh, prison. Prison <laughs> used to be, <laughs> yeah, it's a prison. Um, it used to be the Bagram Air Base. Mm -hmm. It still is. But with inside it is a detention prison mm -hmm. uh, for uh, scores of people who've been picked up by the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. uh, right now there's over 2,000 being held there. Mm -hmm. Obama absolutely will not allow for those people to have, uh, you know, due process. Well, the Red Cross even had right. difficulty visiting them, and, and, right. and even Nazi Germany often allowed mm -hmm. the Red Cross to right. go in to check on the fate of prisoners. Not that uh, they would publicize right. it afterwards, but yeah. uh, um, I, I, I believe that um, at some point they were allowed to go in, but mm -hmm. they're not allowed to talk to anybody mm -hmm. about what they saw. Right. Um, right. And, you know, this this is very unsettling. It's mm -hmm. disturbing. And you know that uh, torture is happening there. Mm -hmm. Well, and there was a notorious uh, series of deaths uh, that happened shortly uh, in, the, in the few years after the invasion, I understand, mm -hmm. uh, that the United States was, uh, they, that people were being held in, I guess, metal tanks of some sort, and they suffocated mm -hmm. and... Uh, it was a scandal in every place around the world except, of course, here, uh, where people Correct. in this country barely even heard about it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, anyway, we're going to uh, do a few announcements here. We are an activist group in the Gay Liberation Network, so we do like to get you plugged into what's going on. And one of the best ways to do that is to check out our website, uh, www.gayliberation.net. Um, and uh, you just check that out and you can get hooked up with all sorts of things that are going on. You can contact us uh, and get involved in uh, GLN. Um, also, uh, there's a very important issue now. Um, in Greece, there is unfortunately a mass fascist movement which has begun thanks to the economic crisis and the austerity measures of the uh, uh, governments. And uh, on Saturday, January 19th, there's going to be International Day of Protest. I'm sorry uh, so much of that information flew up on your screen so quickly. But um, basically, on a Saturday, uh, January 19th at 1 p.m. at the Greek Consulate here in Chicago, as well as many, many, many cities around the world, there will be an International Day of Protest against uh, the fascist party in uh, Greece. Um, the so-called New Dawn Party is responsible for a whole wave of attacks on uh, immigrants in particular, but also anyone who stands up against them, and it's truly a frightening situation. Uh, they are the third largest parliament, parliamentary party in, in Greece, and it really is a responsibility of people, particularly here in Chicago. So we have a large Greek-American population here in Chicago uh, of all political stripes, it should be uh, noted, uh, but the uh, fascist New Dawn Party is attempting to set up a uh, 
uh, a, uh, an office here in Chicago so as to fund their thuggery in Greece itself. So we ask you to come out to this demonstration on uh, Saturday, January 19th, 1 p.m. in front of the Greek consulate, which is at 650 North St. Clair Street. That's just one block east of, uh, of uh, Michigan Avenue. So please check that out. Uh, also, we have our continuing boycott of the Chick-fil-A anti-gay uh, chicken uh, greasy chicken chain, you might say, because they discriminate uh, against LGBT people by, uh, they've had a series of lawsuits against them in federal court, which they've settled out of court, but also they fund millions of dollars to anti-LGBT organizations, so please uh, do not patronize the Chick-fil-A chain. Um, back to some of the issues here involved with uh, today's demonstration, which uh, took place on the 11th anniversary of the opening of the Guantanamo Bay prison in uh, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Um, there were other issues that I was really happy to see raised. One was the NATO Five. Um, which we did a program here uh, a few weeks ago on CAN TV. Uh, Jill, could you tell people who are the NATO Five and what that's why people here in Chicago should be concerned about their cases? Sure. Um, the NATO Five are uh, a, a group of uh, young men who were uh, picked out by uh, the Chicago police and uh, imprisoned, essentially, and mm -hmm. accused of. Uh, terrorist activity mm -hmm. and how this all came about was that the Chicago Police Department used informants undercover police officers working as informants and basically they used the the classic uh, you know FBI police technique of entrapment mm -hmm. um, and even then they had to uh, from what I understand they kind of had to work really hard at it because they offered the these inducements, <laughs> inducements and, and these young men said, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. And then, so they actually, from what I understand, had to try to plant evidence, mm -hmm. which, you know, is completely mm -hmm. bogus. Well, and, and of course that all ignores the terrorism of NATO itself, right. which is exactly. um, the biggest military alliance, not just in the world today, but in world history. Um, in a world that you can't even claim that there's the, you got to fight against the evil Russians or the evil Chinese or whatever. Uh, basically, the United States is responsible for half the world's military spending and uh, so as to basically uh, gin up an atmosphere of fear on the eve of the NATO summits. They conducted these very high profile arrests, front page of the Tribune, all that sort of stuff. Uh, to basically frighten people away from, I think, uh, exercising their constitutional rights to protest against NATO. So the NATO Five is a case that is very much, again, part of the misuse of the uh, justice system to uh, promote uh, a political agenda on the part mm -hmm. of our leaders, not only Rahm Emanuel, but also uh, Barack Obama and the others in D.C. Um, which raises another issue. Um, it was also brought up at today's demonstration that uh, Obama passed uh, the uh, National Defense Authorization Act. And, and for those who are perhaps following it, that's got a lot of implications for civil liberties. But it, for those who perhaps who aren't aware of what the NDAA is, could you tell people what that's about, please, Jill? Sure. The National Defense Authorization Act, the NDAA, uh, basically says that the U.S. military can indefinitely detain anyone, mm -hmm. uh, non-U.S. citizen or U.S. citizen. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, this is, you know, on the president's say-so. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So in much the same way that his drone uh, program works, if mm -hmm. he says this person is a, a terrorist, go pick them up. Mm -hmm. Or worse, or worse, go go assassinate or, them, or go go assassinate them. Yeah. So, this again, it's uh, these uh, really repressive measures mm -hmm. to keep the people of this country in line mm -hmm. while the U.S. goes and and continues to expand its empire. Mm -hmm. and, and the administration literally has a kill list, where um, whether or not a person's a U.S. citizen or not. They can be put on the list if the president say so. There's no judicial oversight. 
the president, in this case President Obama, literally plays judge, jury, and executioner, sends a drone flight over, kills that person, and uh, there's been an instance, uh, several incidents now where apparently they not only go after the people they initially target, but they go after first responders by immediately sending in subsequent uh, uh, drone attacks um, as the first responders trying to help people. And this is the reason why we have terrorists in the world, is, is that when people see the United States behaving in this patently unlawful uh, situation, uh, that's why uh, you've got an Al-Qaeda the Magrim, the Al-Qaeda of, of, of this, that, and the other thing um, outside of Afghanistan, outside of Pakistan. It, it, it has mushroomed thanks to the actions of both the Bush and Obama administrations in provoking the legitimate hatred of peoples around the world for the United States. I mean, if we were having drone attacks uh, fired off to us by the Prime Minister of Canada uh, or uh, the President of Mexico, of course, people in the United States here would be up in arms about that. Well, that's how the people of Pakistan feel. That's how the people uh, in country after country around the world feel, thanks to the actions of the United States. Um, and and it is, I think it's been said a few times that uh, uh, if people were not terrorists when they arrived at Guantanamo, certainly the conditions in which they were held, the unjustness of their situation would make uh, almost anyone a terrorist uh, as a result of that, that uh, awful, unlawful imprisonment. Um, we have just a, a, a little bit to go here. One issue I wanted to bring up in this wave of discussion about the Newton, Connecticut massacre is People are talking about, oh, what do we do about the violence? What do we do about the violence? But when you have a country like the United States, which commits this very conscious and uh, uh, deliberate terrorism against peoples around the world, the chickens come home to roost. And you can't commit that kind of violence, not just in Guantanamo Bay, but in the prisons of our own country here, without that kind of violence being revisited here. Um, so some uh, thoughts to leave you with. We're going to close out here uh, with a few announcements, but thank you again, Jill, Thanks, for uh, being on our show tonight. Um, and we're going to close out, as I said, with a few announcements here. Um, let's see, if, again, please boycott the Chick-fil-A uh, restaurant chain for their anti-gay activities. Uh, and. Uh, Check out the demonstration, International Day of Demonstrations Against uh, the Rise of Fascism and Racism in Greece. That's going to be Saturday, January 19th at 1 p.m. Uh, here in Chicago and around the world. Uh, here in Chicago, it's going to take place in front of the Greek Consulate, which is on 650 North St. Clair Street in Chicago. Um, and also, uh, check out the next GLN meeting, we meet the first Wednesday of each month at the Burger Park Cultural Center. The next meeting is Wednesday, February 6th. And uh, check out our next show, which is going to be uh, generally on the second Friday of each month. And it's, in this case, going to be Friday, February 8th. And we'd also like to, of course, thank the people who made tonight's show possible.